I am Dr. Kannan, head and neck oncosurgeon, Apollo Cancer Center, Chennai. Today we will speak about oral cancers. Oral cancer is one of the commonest cancers in India. If you look at the number of patients with oral cancers, India accounts for almost 30% of oral cancers. But in the world of the entire cancers, only 5% is oral cancers. Why the oral cancer is quite common in India? So we could even call it as an Indian cancer because one in three patients of cancer would be oral cancers. So particularly in males, it's one of the most commonest cancers. Why it is so common in India, which is not common other elsewhere of this world? This is because of the particular habit, which is very particular to the Indian subcontinent. One is tobacco chewing. Chewing tobacco habit is quite common in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and the Indian subcontinent. So most of these oral cancer patients are from India and also the other causes of oral cancers are like chewing tobacco, chewing uh, betel nut without tobacco. Betel nut by itself will also cause oral cancer. Smoking and alcohol also has an additive factor in causing oral cancers. So since because of these habits, oral cancer is quite common in India. It was initially more common in males. Now with females increasingly smoking and using tobacco, it's becoming common in females also. So once so this is an oral cancer which is an Indian cancer we should take all necessary methods to decrease the intake of tobacco in India which would decrease the incidence of oral cancers. If a patient who is chewing or consuming tobacco if they develop one of these symptoms which I am going to mention they have to consult a doctor. If they develop an ulcer in the oral cavity which is not healing for 15 days then you must consult a doctor. If there is a blood stain discharge in the oral cavity there could be patients who are not able to open the mouth widely there will be decreased movement in the tongue. These are all the most commonest symptoms of oral cancers. Sometimes the pain in the oral cavity can be radiating to the ear. If the patient with oral ulcer has pain in the ear, then it is high chance of it being malignant. If the patient with the ulcer in the oral cavity develops the neck swelling, then there is a high chance of it is being malignant. So whenever you suspect malignancy, definitely consult a doctor. Once you come to the hospital, most of these patients would need an imaging. If the patient has lesion in the buccal mucosa on the sides of the cheek, then we would do a CT scan. If the lesion is in the oral cavity, in the tongue, then we would do an MRI. If the lesion is big, which is spread to the neck nodes, which is spread to the other parts of the body, these patients would need a PET scan. These are the investigations which we do for these patients. And they would, these patients would undergo a biopsy, and this biopsy will tell us what type of cancer it is. And accordingly, we can treat these patients. So now coming on to the treatment, the patients have three important modalities of treatment. It could be surgery, it could be radiation or it could be chemotherapy. For oral cancer, surgery is the mainstay in the treatment. So before going into treatment, we should know what are the stagings or stage in which the oral cancer patients present. If the patient present with a tumor which is less than 2 cm, it is stage 1. If it is less than 4 cm, it is stage 2. If the tumor is bigger than 4 cm and it is spread to the other parts of the body like skin, to the mandible, to the neck nodes, then it is an advanced tumor. So early tumors, less than 4 cm, treatment is quite simple. It is only single modality, only surgery. If the tumor is more than 4 cm spread to the other parts of the body, then it will be multi-modality. You have to do the surgery and then the surgery should be followed by radiation or chemotherapy. So this is very important. So whenever you have a small tumor, consult a doctor so that the uh, so treatment is very simple. Smaller tumors, less than 4 cm, cure rate is 80%. If the smaller tumor is less than 2 cm, cure rate is more than 90%. If the tumor increases in size, if it is more than 4 cm, the cure rate will decrease more than 50%. So early diagnosis, early treatment will increase the uh, prognosis of these patients. Similarly, the treatment of the oral cancers are also advanced quite a bit. If the patient reaches a hospital with a small tumor and we have to remove a particular part like bone or particular part of the tongue, then we do a microvascular surgery and replace this part. For when we remove the bone, we replace it with the bone. When we remove the soft tissue, we replace it with the soft tissue. So this is quite important. Whenever you have a tumor which is little posterior, little behind the oral cavity, for example, tonsil or in the base of the tongue, these patients needed a major surgery like opening of the bone and then doing. Now these, these tumors can be handled with robotic surgery. With robotic surgery, major uh, complex reconstructions can be avoided complex approaches can be avoided. The surgery would be quite simple and the patients can be discharged within 3-4 days with good prognosis and good quality of life. 
So the robotic surgery has changed the surgery of oropharyngeal cancers like tonsil and waist. Similarly, these patients after surgery, the entire tumor will be subjected to the pathologist. The pathologist would tell us whether this tumor has gone to the nerve, tumor has gone through the blood vessels, what is the size of the tumor, how many nodes are affected, whether the bone is affected. Depending on it, we would plan for the adjuvant treatment. So to decrease the chance of the tumor coming back, we would give them radiation and chemotherapy which would decrease the chance of tumors coming back. So now even there is a lot of advances in radiation and chemotherapy. So now with IMRT and IGRT, the complications of radiation are grossly reduced. Similarly for uh, chemotherapy, initially we used to use cisplatin. We are using it on a weekly basis in a mild dose so that the complication rates are quite less. Those patients who cannot tolerate cisplatin, they can be treated with immunotherapy or they can be treated with cetuximab or other sites of treatment. So the treatment has grossly increased, the advances have grossly come. So now when we reach the hospital at the early stage and you undergo a proper treatment, the cure rate is much better. Following this treatment, the tumor can come back. Whatever tumor comes back usually comes back within first two to three years. During the first two to three years, you should be on regular follow-up. So first two years, we would ask the patients to come once in three months. We would image them at the end of one year. For next two, three to five years, we usually see the patients once in six months. So after five years, the chance of recurrence is quite low. The most important thing for recurrence is restarting the habits. Patient, if they restart chewing or smoking tobacco, the chance of tumor coming back is quite high. Similarly, whatever the patient, whoever who had the previous quality of life can be uh, regained back after surgery and proper reconstruction. So this is quite important. So prolonged follow-up is quite important. Thank you.